Everyone take a minute. Everyone take two minutes and read this one over. Go ahead on your own, two minutes on your own. I know these are harder, but you can do this. Two minutes on your own, go. Ungo or pause or unrepause or whatever you do, turn it back on. Um, they're getting harder and that's good. This one says a fourth grade student who reads on grade level and consistently performs well in spelling tests that are part of weekly word study activities. This, this student often misspells the same words and often familiar words in everyday writing. So they do good in reading comprehension and good on the spelling exams, but they're making the same mistakes in their writing and their spelling on in everyday uh, words. The following table shows examples of typical errors the student makes on class writing assignments and in informal notes to friends. I could totally see how the teacher pulls out these words from writing assignments, but the informal notes to friends, uh, I'm not so sure what to say. Does that mean that the teacher is reading the student's personal journal? Yeah, it does. I mean, they're writing an informal note to a friend. So technically that is a, a letter to a friend that's meant for their friend, probably not the teacher, right? So the teacher is looking at the student's journal when they're not looking. That just feels like a red flag to me. And I understand why you would do that. And I understand why teachers do that. And I understand the reasons why. So there's no judgments there. I'm just saying like, they didn't have to put the head in this essay question. They could have just said on their writing assignments. But anyways, um, in this scenario here, these are some of these everyday words that the student gets wrong. They, the, they're they supposed to write form and they write from. They're supposed to write split and they write spilt. They're supposed to do printed and they do pinted. They're supposed to do dependent and they do dependent. okay? And then it says, and so, so before we go on, let's look at these errors. They're supposed to do form and they do from. They get the order. There's an order issue, order in sounds right. And then split and they do spilt, another order in sounds. Do you see that? They're getting the order wrong. And then with printed and dependent, they're dropping sounds. They're omitting sounds, right? So sometimes they're, they're, they're getting the sounds in the wrong order. Sometimes they're dropping. I'll just do drop. We could say omitting, but I'll just say dropping sounds. Right? What do we do? Um, sometimes, again, what happens is the teacher's like, oh, they don't know cluster, or they don't know R control, or um, they don't know blends, right? or they don't know, um, you know, uh, another blend in the middle there. I could see how that could happen. And that's probably true. There could be lots of different things that are happening here. But when we see students getting the sound order wrong or dropping sounds, we want to do some type of activity like uh, say it, move it, spell it, write it, something like this, where we, we practice, you know, um, we practice some type of um, uh, phoneme, grapheme, or grapheme, phoneme uh, mapping. Is that right? Phoneme, grapheme, mapping activities? Okay. All right, let's read the rest of the question. It says here, the student's overall spelling performance suggests the student would best, uh, would benefit most from targeted intervention focused on which of the following foundational skills. So we're going we're gonna to do an intervention or some type of mini, mini lesson activity, right? And should it be on a mini lesson on activity involving orthographic mapping rules for inflected words? So are we doing that? Inflection, inflectional suffixes? Do they not know how to add inflectional suffixes? Is that the issue? No, not with this question. How about this? Uh, is the issue sounding out and blending letter sounds to decode words? Is it with blends? Are they having issues with blends? Uh, they they drop one blend. I mean, is it blends? I mean, I could see how one might think it's blends because there's a there's a blend there, there's a there's a blend there, there's a blend there, there's a blend there. I could totally see that. Oh my goodness, I could see that happening. 
right? I mean, it looks like they're dropping blends. And maybe that's part of it. But that's not the right answer. We'll come back to that one in a moment. Discriminating between consonants and vowel sounds and words, I don't think that's the issue, right? Oh, no. Discriminating between consonants and vowel. No, that's that's not the issue, right? Okay. Um, D, uh, the activity could be uh, segmenting all the phonemes in the words sequentially. So another way of saying that is working on sound order. And a good activity to help with uh, ma uh, mapping out sounds and get, getting the sounds the correct order is to do something like say it, move it, write it. Like where they, they say the word, uh, they say the word split. Then they segment, segment all the phonemes. S -p -l -it. And then they blend them together, split, and then they write it again split. Do you see that activity? Say it, move it, write it, spell it. There's because we're noticing some of this stuff is word order and they're and they're omitting stuff, an activity like say it and move it where you're segmenting the sounds and focusing on the order might be really helpful. Thumbs up team. I know. I know. Um, you do see a pattern in, in some of the stuff they're doing, right? This say it, move it, spell it, and this type of, you know, phoneme, graphing, mapping, mapping, you know, and uh, explicit instruction on matching up sounds with letters and letters with sounds. This does seem to be something that keeps repeating, a theme that keeps repeating, yes? And it goes back to our bigger theme, right? We said our bigger theme in this section of problems that we're doing right now is a whole bunch of uh, questions involving um, mapping up uh, sounds with letters and letters with sounds because when we help a student with encoding, it reinforces decoding. And decoding is going to support encoding, right? 